welcome to another show of this week. At the beginning of this week, on Monday, October 24th, the United Nations family marked the United Nations Day, a day set aside every year since 1971. This day acknowledges the contribution of the United Nations to all member states. Here are some of the highlights of the day as we celebrated in the capital, Juba. The United Nations mission in South Sudan and 20 plus other UN agencies, funds and programs marked the 71st anniversary of UN Day at the Nyakron Cultural Center in Juba. The well-attended event was marked by an ambience of hope and togetherness. The day was also celebrated as World Polio Day. This was the first time that the celebration was open to the public and the various health agencies took this opportunity to run a polio vaccination campaign. Addressing the diverse crowd, outgoing SRSG of UNMIS, Ellen Margaret Loy delivered a message from the United Nations Secretary General, renewing her call for the leaders of South Sudan to set aside their differences. As we come together here today to celebrate UN Day, we must be steadfast in our faith that South Sudanese can put aside their differences and unite for peace. The peace agreement remains the most credible, credible vehicle to revive the peace process and should be fully implemented. SRSG Loy also urged the transitional government of national unity and the parties to the conflict in South Sudan to put the interests of their people first. Reading on from UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon's message, SRSG Loy highlighted that various unresolved conflicts were a cause of suffering for many. But we have also suffered enormous heartbreak including unresolved conflicts causing immense suffering throughout the troubled Middle East, in South Sudan, in the Sahel, and beyond. On these and other front lines of violence and disaster, courageous UN staff continue to rise to the occasion and respond to the plight of the vulnerable. The SRSG saluted all the United Nations staff that were working in South Sudan for the cause of peace and helping to build this young nation in a time of conflict. I wish to express my immense gratitude to all of you for your professionalism, enduring commitment, and selfless sacrifices in the service of the people of South Sudan. Representing the government of South Sudan, Minister of Federal Affairs, Dr. Richard Muller, thanked the United Nations for providing humanitarian assistance and support in the area of capacity building in the country. He also said that though the peace agreement that was signed in August 2015 had some implementation problems, it was now successful moving in the right direction. We have had problems, we admit, but we are trying our level best to overcome the problems. As you all know, the agreement on resolution of conflict in the Republic of South Sudan was signed in August 2015. The implementation has had some problems, but of late we are moving successfully in that direction. I can tell you that of recent, the President has issued a number of decrees and a number of decisions have been made to facilitate the implementation of the peace agreement. At the event, South Sudanese and other nationals alike who have benefited from the work of the United Nations also had a chance to speak about their experiences with the speaker after speaker narrating their story. I am thankful to UN because they have not ceased to support me. They are continue providing me with the assistance that I need. They uh, help me through my uh, secondary school and now through my tertiary education. I am now achieving another milestone in my life, again to become 
the first in my family to have a bachelor degree. Our key partner was the UN Women. They supported us, they trained us in advocacy, they trained us in leadership, they trained us in strategic planning to do the advocacy. As a result, we visited the women in all the states when they were still states. The women generated information and we developed what we call the South Sudan Women Agenda for Peace and Sustainable Development. That agenda has an asking, has a demand which we wanted to be included in the peace agreement. And thankfully, through the UN, we were assisted to engage with the negotiators and we had uh, most of the issues included in the agreement the issues of reform, the issues of transitional justice, the issue of economic justice to women. With similar other celebrations going on in locations like Torit, Awil, Yambio, Bentiu, Malakal, Wao, Bor, Rumbek, Kwajok, and Warap, it is hoped that the overall message of peace will be impressed as this year's theme, UN for the People of South Sudan, continues to be the pivot of the various UN agencies' work in the country. As part of several activities organized to mark the UN Day, Nepalese peacekeepers conducted a free medical camp in Nakitun village located next to the UN compound in Jebel area. Up next is a piece we filed. In an effort to win hearts and minds in areas they constantly patrol, Nepalese peacekeepers have sent out their doctors to Nakitun village. Nakitun village is located southwest of Juba town and lies next to the United Nations compound in Jebel area. With a population of about 400, the residents of Nakitun suffer daily hardships. While patrolling the area, the Nepalese troops interacted with the residents and witnessed that the residents were in need of sanitation facilities and basic medical care, among other needs. Captain Dinesh Mala from the Nepalese contingent says they are now working with the United Nations mission to also provide a healthy environment for these residents. We have been providing uh, um, water, water, clean drinking water weekly and after that, uh, so this is our first time we have, we have our medical camp here and we are here to uh, check the, uh, we are here for the medical checkups and we are providing them the uh, uh, medicines and also first aids for them. The head doctor of the medical camp highlighted some of the ailments they have treated. Uh, commonly uh, there are allergies, uh, arthritis, um, uh, malaria, typhoid, syphilis uh, uh, and uh, mm, uh, sexual transmitted diseases. I'm very happy with the coming of the, the Nepalists here to help us in such ways of health care. We have to stay here for a long time. We don't have any organization who will come and assist us in this area. But now for their work, we are very happy with them. We call God to bless them, to give us more things which can defend us in this area. As the medical camp targets by monthly visits, the Nepalese troops will continue to treat patient after patient while other troops will work to provide water and sanitation facilities with the hope that the well-being of the residents of Nakitun will improve resident after resident and that basic ailments will remain at bay. In a separate developing story, a total of 145 children were this week released by the Cobra faction and opposition forces and handed over to the National Disarmament, Demobilization and Reintegrated Commission. The United Nations Children's Fund were at hand to witness the event. Up next is a story we filed using some of the pictures they handed over to us. The handover in Pibor was witnessed by UNICEF's country representative in South Sudan, Mahimbo Mudoe, and several other diplomats. Mudoe said this is the largest number of children freed since 2015 when 1,775 children were released in the Greater Pibor administrative area. The United Nations Children's Agency, UNICEF, hopes that this release will be followed by many others so that the 16,000 children who are still within the armed forces and armed groups will be able to return to their families. 
Following their reunification, the children's families will be provided with three months worth of food assistance as a take-home package, as well as livestock to supplement household incomes during the reintegration process. During their release, the children were formally disarmed and provided with civilian clothes. Medical screenings were carried out and the children were registered for a reintegration program. According to UNICEF, the children who are currently in an interim care center will receive psychosocial support and will be reunified with their families and reintegrated into the communities with assistance from UNICEF and other partners. With the ongoing fighting across the country, UNICEF continues to receive reports about the recruitment of children in Unity, Jonglai, and other states. UNICEF has urged all parties to abide by the international law to end recruitment and to release children. The UN Children's Agency estimates that 16,000 children have been recruited by armed forces and armed groups in South Sudan since the onset of the fighting that began in December 2013. More than 800 children are estimated to have been recruited since the beginning of 2016. In our next item, about 80 orphans in Juba recently had the chance to spend time and play games with Japanese peacekeepers. Here's a sneak preview of how they spent part of their morning. Led by their contingent commander, Japanese peacekeepers from the United Nations Mission in South Sudan a week ago visited an orphanage in Juba and spent time playing with the children. The peacekeepers arrived at the orphanage London with gifts and toys for the children at the Juba orphanage home. For the children, it was all plenty of smiles as each picked out and played with toys that were available. There were few tears, though nothing a toy, a good game or a warm smile couldn't fix. For the peacekeepers, it was indeed an opportunity to also show off traditional Japanese games. やはり Japanese blue helmets, mainly engineers, arrived in South Sudan in 2012 as part of the United Nations mission. For now, as they work in support of the mission's mandate while plugging into charitable works, some of their inspiration will continue to be drawn from the precious moments as seen at this orphanage. Really, this is a, a very good, this will encourage the children uh, that uh, they may be courageous for what what want to what, what, for what what they want to do, like because now they are being growing up, uh, slowly slowly when I do, uh, interact them with the community, uh, definitely they will understand uh, what is going uh, around them. Secondly, these children are being traumatized; they lost their parents, fathers and mother, and whenever it looks for uh, somebody who is caring looking after him i think he will change he will be happy what i see is actually it's uh, it, it's actually like um they they are taking you know what uh, the kids are always you know they just wanted to make the kids to be happy and stay calm not of i mean being maybe bored and like being thinking of what you know they just want to make them like um, you know they, there are people and there are people actually willing to be with them and to keep them you know play well and I mean keep them happy always so that's what I experience. We will now end our show with our usual voices of peace from those we spoke to at the UN event earlier on in the week. Goodbye for now and be sure to join us again next week. Peace means a lot because it is uh, an ingredient for development. Without peace, there is no development. With peace comes the infrastructure development. With peace comes the building of road. With peace comes the building of schools. 
uh, the building of health centers, the, uh, the access of the needy people uh, with the humanitarian need. Where there is no peace, uh, people cannot exist because uh, the fact that peace is absent will restrict people to move from different places. And as church, it will not give uh, citizens the right to have access to education, have access to health facilities, have access to better life. So it is only peace that can give better life to the citizens, uh, only peace that can build schools, only peace that can build health facilities. So South Sudanese need to embark on the road of peace in order to achieve sustainable development.